good evening uh, this one topic that uh, is pending in the third unit which is the virtual LAN so we'll try to understand what basically uh, virtual LAN is and what is this concept of virtual that we are bringing into LAN and what is that we're going to gain out of this concept of virtual LAN so getting into the topic um, so far like you know we know that uh, we create a local area network uh, based on a geographical area where we connect uh, several workstations and uh, share our data. Now here uh, we are going to do something uh, where we are adding a term called virtual meaning there is something where not just by physical wiring we are going to do uh, but there is some software implementation that you are going to bring within uh, you know local area network and uh, why are we going to do that by configuration in software we will try to understand. Okay, so uh, let's try to understand this now. Um, I think you remember uh, we use some terms like collision domains and broadcast domains. So what you basically uh, uh, you know uh, mean by collision domain is uh, what typically happens when you have these layer one devices like hubs or repeaters is when you have uh, you know, multiple stations which are say connected through the hub and uh, hub does not have any intelligent capability so what happens is when you know, most stations are trying to send uh, frames at the same time it gets collided at the hub and hub basically does not do but just propagate the collision signals throughout the network and so what is typically happening here is you need to detect the collisions and uh, have to you know retransmit all the frames so this typically is uh, going to waste your resources uh, the bandwidth that you basically have as well as the time aspect is actually going to be wasted so how did we avoid or how did we limit the collisions is to bring in the physical device or the layer 2 device where bridge and switch actually partition these collision domains right so what typically happened is it does not forward the collisions through the other ports happens in a particular port the collision then um, you actually limit that because bridge or switch basically has this inherent capability of filtering the frames right so accordingly it tries to forward the frames to the port that it has to forward and so when there is a corrupted frame that gets in it's basically trying to you know uh, filter out and so the collision is actually being restricted but the layer 2 device also has a major drawback now with respect to say uh, you know broadcast or multicast frames I typically say uh, you're working as a project group okay and uh, you guys want to form a group or you want to broadcast uh, to all your workstations within your group certain information but uh, you know the drawback of the bridges which is that when a broadcast frame or a multicast frame comes on in the destination address uh, the layer 2 device which is basically the bridge or switch does not know what to do and it actually goes on to forward across all the ports and so there is no limitation uh, limiting or filtering the broadcast frames or multicast frames in these ports and so that typically is again a problem um, where uh, when you need to limit the broadcast packets uh, you know over the network you need to bring in a layer 3 device which is where you know the layer 3 is basically where it contains the broadcast packets so that becomes a very very costly solution uh, where you need to limit broadcast uh, packets by installing just uh, you know router uh, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to bring in a kind of a software uh, configuration of you know how can we typically uh, logically segment lands into multiple broadcast domains now this is the idea uh, we have to understand this now when i was talking about uh, the spanning tree uh, algorithm in the bridges uh, what basically happened is that you want to avoid the loops and so you didn't physically remove the cable but instead you logically disable the ports so this is something where you were able to achieve you know reliability through redundant solutions typically here when you have a group where you need to do broadcast but typically when there are so many such broadcasts being happening inside the network what happens is that uh, there is too much of traffic that actually goes and incur at the router level so this we need to have a software level configurations where we can actually go on to build you know multiple broadcast domains logically rather than 
through physical segmenting of lands throughout the solution. So that's basically the idea that we are going to talk about virtual lands, where when you take a land, you call it as a single broadcast domains, which means only a layer three device can actually go on to split the broadcast domain, not the layer two device. So what happens is that when you actually have too much of traffic, you know, coming at the layer three, uh, the router processing also is quite slow. You know why? Because it has to uh, look through the IP address of the packets, look into its routing table, do a lot of processing of which subnet or which interface it has to forward the packets and all that. So generally the routing processor is slow. And when you have a lot of podcast streams also coming in and then, you know, router has to limit it we can try to you know uh, limit such broadcast traffic uh, you know uh, and uh, through logical solutions so um, so yeah so this is the drawback that we have the broadcast domain basically depends on the physical connection of the devices in the network so the alternate solution is the vlan where instead of you know physically limiting the broadcast domain by bringing in the layer 3 device Let's try to come up with a logical solution or a software way of implementation to contain broadcast traffic or multicast traffic. And that's, you know, basically we land for you. Now, this is just, uh, you know, a picture where um, we can go on to, uh, you know, see that uh, there is basically some hubs and there are a lot of stations connected to one of the port in the switch. And uh, so each one is basically a physical LAN segment. Uh, say probably you have this in one particular building and uh, this is in another particular say floor or building and the users actually go on to communicate you know uh, to all these land segments but just imagine that you are in a project group where you just want to do a broadcast but typically what happens is that the hub goes on to you know send to all others and the switch in turn does not know what so it goes on to forward to every other ports but it's only the typical router which is actually going to limit the you know broadcast traffic that is coming in so the bridge does not basically so instead of unnecessarily you know overloading at all ports the broadcast traffic we are trying to actually you know contain that at a logical level so you need to understand that you know the collision domain here in this case here is one particular port of the switch is actually going to contain your collision in this so the hub basically acts as collision points so you need to understand that you know there are several collision domains coming into picture because the layer 2 device is able to actually you know segment your collision domains but not your broadcast domains only the router can go and do that so for this, uh, you know, we are going to actually come up with solutions where VLAN is actually going to allow you to logically segment the LAN into different broadcast domains. So that is, uh, you know, so it's, it's logical segmentation does not necessarily need to be physically connected together. You can, you know, go on to, you know, configure your VLANs such a way that they belong to, you know, different buildings also and make them all such a way that they all belongs to one particular broadcast domain. Now, to make that clear, let's get on to, you know, the case here. Now, if you basically see here, now I can actually software wise, I can configure uh, such a way that uh, this is belongs to one particular wheel and meaning one project group is working on this and other project group is working on this. Now I can make sure that way if I have a broadcast traffic from say one of the stations to receive it, I will ensure that it does not get propagated to the other you know ports are the other VLAN so you are limiting your broadcast traffic if you go on to logically segment uh, you know you are by configuring them as belonging to say a particular VLAN so VLAN is going to have some identifiers and uh, there's going to be some you know software based configuration that you're going to do at uh, you know layer 2 devices such a way that you can limit your broadcast traffic so it's not that you need to basically have a router to contain your broadcast traffic but something that you can go uh, on to do at the station and the you know layer 2 device such a way that you can configure them uh, that these stations all belong to a vlan a and whatever broadcast traffic that is coming in will not be you know propagated on to other ports uh, but will be limited only to the particular vlan so going on further now let's try to see this uh, so that you can 
really try to appreciate it. So it's not necessary that you know um, the VLAN should be physically be uh, connected to only one particular uh, port. The stations uh, from you know different LAN segments or different LANs, uh, uh, you know, uh, can also be configured to be used under the same VLAN. Say for example, there are several floors here as you see, floor n, floor n plus 1, n minus 1 and all that. Now, each one is being actually configured to a particular, you know, physical LAN segment. Now, but still, you can do your configurations of VLAN such a way that the stations actually can belong to several floors. These can be logically grouped under one VLAN. Okay, so it is not necessary that, you know, say um, a project group is there, uh, you know, and they have to just belong to one physical segment. It is That is not necessary. They can actually belong to, say, one of the user can actually be in a different floor, but they can all be logically grouped under one VLAN. So whatever that they want to communicate, they can create the multicast or broadcast group, and we can ensure that, uh, you know, uh, the stations, though on different floors, um, or even in different buildings can actually belong to the same VLAN. So it's basically a logical partitioning that you need to do. It is not necessary that you know all has to belong to the same physical segment to basically you know contain your broadcast or multicast traffic. So let's let's uh, let's go further. Now um, see this is again another case where you have a switch and. Uh, uh, some bus topology are there say this is one project group working and this is one project group working and this is another project group working now typically they want to do uh, you know it's it's a kind of broadcast they want to do uh, so what happens here is say this project group uh, has done everything uh, you know quickly but this project group members are literally you know not able to complete their thing so it is safe uh, it's not necessary that you need to uh, bring in some people here and you know physically move these stations into this so that you can complete the work because you're literally going to have some broadcast or multicast traffic coming into picture but rather you can make such a way that you can configure logically that you know uh, these station can also belong to another VLAN and you know uh, instead of physically moving the stations from uh, one group to another group you can still go on to contain logically by separating them under one particular work group okay so um, this is again an uh, you know the extension of that that uh, you know vlan can be across several buildings or whatever be the case uh, say multiple switches are coming in so you know but you can actually go on to create multiple vlans across you know uh, whatever be the land segment or lands that you belong to but you can logically go on to configure that under one particular VLAN fine so yeah so basically uh, the advantage of VLAN how are you going to do that let's try to understand but there are some advantages that you are literally going to gain by you know, creating these virtual work groups uh, so that uh, you know the main advantage is you go on to reduce the traffic to unnecessary destinations because you're not just like that forwarding the broadcast traffic to all other unnecessary stations ports and you know all that so the volume of the traffic uh, basically passing through the router increases uh, what happens is that uh, the latency in latency meaning the delay in processing the routers also gets affected which in turn results in reduced performance so why do why should we unnecessarily you know load the routers instead when you actually block the traffic uh, it's, it's typically going to, uh, you know, typically contain your traffic only within your work group. So we are literally trying to form virtual groups uh, where we can actually, you know, uh, communicate between the members of the group. Now, typically, when you start to form project groups or work groups, it's not necessary that you need to be physically together, but you can be, you know, at a different building also. But still, you yourself can actually form virtual group, uh, work groups and, you know, uh, communicate. So in that necessary, it's not that it's needs to be physically together but you can still go on to form a VLAN and contain your broadcast or the multicast traffic within that particular VLAN and yeah this is a very very important point where uh, we have to you know, understand that uh, the cost and the physical reconfiguration uh, the time to actually do all that is actually going to be reduced and it is not necessary that you need to just install a router to just limit your broadcast domain but you have got a software solution at the layer level itself that uh, device itself that you can actually 
form virtual groups and most importantly this aspect of security comes into picture now if you basically see the security aspect uh, what happens is that when you actually do this kind of a sensitive information among your group and it becomes a multicast or broadcast when you don't have such a limitation there now all other other members belonging to different groups can also go on to receive the message and that's not secure so a software way of you know limiting the broadcast domain is actually going to you know improve security as well so these being the aspects of you know uh, uh, advantages of using vlans uh, how does how can you basically achieve by creating virtual groups is basically by two mechanisms one is called implicit tagging and the other is called explicit tagging so oh, let's try to understand this but uh, they went on to implement this vlan uh, based on the ieee standard spec which is ieee 802.1.q standard so this standard clearly says uh, about these implicit tagging and the explicit tagging so what do you mean by implicit tagging is um, you know you have some way in which you can actually go on to identify that uh, you know which uh, particular vlan uh, the particular data received belongs to so which means that at the you know layer 2 device uh, we are going to have uh, in the table which is basically going to contain the port and the mac address being tagged in it we are going to bring in another mapping where uh, you know say uh, this particular port you know belongs to vlan 1 and this particular port say belongs to vlan 2 so the stations uh, you know belonging to a particular port are being mapped to a particular vlan now this can be a case um, or you can also go on to map uh, every individual mac addresses to what vlan it actually belongs to okay so this is an implicit tagging where in your table itself you're going to have an extra column uh, at the table level which can be either manually you know configured or the bridges can learn dynamically such a way that you know uh, you can actually go on to map the vlan ids based on uh, the layer uh, one information say the port number uh, is mapped to vlan one or you know uh, the uh, layer two addresses uh, this can be in one way uh, the other way is basically explicit tagging where we are going to modify the frames um, which means that in the frame itself you are going to tag the vlan id say you have the source mac address in the frame and next to that you're going to have the vlan id so the frame that you are basically receiving through the ports you can go and identify that you know it's from vlan 1 so it has to be accordingly learned uh, by explicitly tagging then you want to learn that it belongs to the particular so the bridge uh, has to be a vlan aware bridge uh, so you know based on the tagging of the data you go on to understand which vlan it actually belongs to so this is you know two different concepts uh, so this is uh, just the one that i was trying to talk where in the implicit tagging um, you know you can have uh, the ports being mapped to that particular so port one belongs to vlan one port two belongs to vlan one port three belongs to you know uh, vlan two and all that but the the concept here is in a layer one vlan where the membership is by port in the implicit tagging if say a station <coughs> is being moved uh, you know to a different vlan uh, or to a different port but you can logically go on to change uh, but he still wants to work in you know a particular vlan you can go on to change uh, you know logically that uh, this port is being now mapped to say vlan 1 okay so that kind of uh, changing at a software level now is permissible uh, even if uh, the user goes on to you know relocate himself to a different uh, port station and all that so um, you know um, that is one thing but yeah to avoid that we can actually go on with the mac level uh, you know um, address changing that you know every station here uh, address is being mapped to that particular vlan so this makes it even more specific that you know um, uh, rather than not at a port level uh, containing it to only one particular uh, you know uh, segment uh, but you can since if it's tied such a way that it is at a mac address level that those belongs to the vlan one it, it gives you even more flexibility to form you know vlans 
uh, there is another thing which we are not going to deal much where you know layer 3 vlans is also possible by just doing a mapping of uh, you know this particular subnet belongs to the particular vlan but uh, don't really get confused by this because layer 2 does not do at an ip level kind of poverty it is just a mapping of uh, you know to be aware that you know vlan 1 belongs to this subnet and vlan 2 belongs to another subnet and all that so this is basically kind of you know implicit uh, tagging that we can go on to do now this is the port level mapping that we are talking where uh, the vlan 1 if you say at a port level if i do the station 3 2 and s1 is being actually connected to ports 4, 7 and 1. So I will go on to have my mapping such a way that port 1, uh, port 4, port 7 is being mapped to uh, you know VLAN 1. So any data, uh, broadcast data that I basically get from one of these ports, um, I'm, I, I am aware now that I have to basically forward it to only within that particular ports because uh, you are containing your broadcast domain to only those particular ports in your table mapping okay so typically goes on for this uh, station 9 8 and 7 where it is being mapped to that particular vlan 3 so that ports will be mapped to that respect to vlan so that the broadcast or the multicast traffic from one of the stations in that particular vlan is only going to be contained to that specific ports so this is a uh, kind of an idea the other kind of an idea is not doing at an implicit level but at an explicit level where you change the frame itself so it becomes more flexible but the point is how the stations uh, has to be aware and uh, you know uh, the bridges also have to be aware uh, whether it is going to be a manual learning or a configured learning we are going to insert the vlan tag uh, in the frame uh, say the station is going to tag because it has particular VLAN software into it and then uh, the so bridge that is going to be forwarding the frames by looking at the you know frame that is adhering to the 802.1Q format um, uh, which uh, goes on to forward to the outgoing ports according to that particular VLAN that you see from the frame. Okay, so how are you going to associate to that? How is the bridge going to learn dynamically? Just through the bridge learning process that they are, you know, dynamically can go on to learn or through static configuration that, you know, you they can go on to currently forward to it. So, you know, this is just an idea where, you know, virtual LAN is basically going to improve your performance when typically when you're working as in terms of work groups, uh, you can, you know, have a lot of uh, broadcast or multicast traffic segmented at a logical level itself rather than, you know, having too much of broadcast being unnecessarily being sent across all the ports in the uh, switches uh, and unnecessarily, uh, you know, having the security issues as well. Okay, so that basically completes uh, VLAN. Thank you for listening.